Welcome to your weekly program, Blahdan, a show with an accent for those without one. You know, cosmetic and American live millions, millions of dollars on skin and I, uh, the cosmetic industry is so huge that really it's like uh, uh, imposing and oppressive cultural norm that the American woman has to pour up with. The tanning industry where American white woman wants to darken their skin. And also we have here the other way when we have a Somali community, an African American community, we have also uh, the other issue where some of uh, uh, Somali women uh, using uh, some kind of products uh, to lighten their skin as a sign of beauty, as a sign of changing their uh, pigmentation, and it's a huge issue uh, that uh, we, our guest today, uh, delve in it with a, a new study, find out uh, about uh, the lighting skin issue in the Somali community. Uh, welcome to Bulahdan. Thank you, Amira. Uh, Amira Adawi, you are you know your public health researcher, and you work with Ra the Ramsey uh, County uh, Department. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, of all the issues out there, uh, why, why that intrigued you or got you to, to think about it? Mm -hmm. So in 2011, we conducted skin lighting uh, study that looked at the practice and we tested products. So first we interviewed uh, seven Somali women. Uh, we conducted but you talked about, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, what triggered that? That you so read the trigger so. uh, was uh, because of I am originally from Somalia oh. and uh, being in Somalia, although I left at very young age, I remember that people used to use uh, skin lighting uh, products. But coming here and growing up here, I saw that a lot of people, a lot of women, particularly using these products, and that uh, and I could see externally how it's affecting them, but I didn't know internally. Uh, it's interesting uh, uh, the reason that drives uh, lighting uh, uh, your skin back home. Is the same reason here? It's, here you are the majority locus, you know, African yeah. the majority darker with darker skin. Here you are dealing with a white majority culture. It does it have to do with... Uh, so the reason is very similar. Although the one in back home, it's very anecdotal. It's like uh, the stories that I hear from people, but we studied here. Mm -hmm. uh, our study focused here. I see. But the reasons are very similar. Women um, said that um, we use this product is to attract m men and also to get rid of dark spots. These were the main two reasons mm -hmm. that we learned so, from this study. So the, uh, I want to be attracted, uh, attractive to men. That's a cultural issue. Uh, well, that's that's something that was not uh, just a Somali. I mean, this is you know, woman yeah. who wants to be uh, attractive uh, in all the culture. But I'm saying, get rid of the black spot. What that's about? Dark spots. Dark uh, spots. Some so. Some of the women that I interviewed talked about during pregnancy because of the hormonal change, I the see. skin color changes, and so they want to get rid of these dark spots. And the, the and, and 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 they look at it from a, a authentic, you know, beaut beautification or just the health. I, this dark spot means something wrong with my, you know, skin, and I need to treat it. So there's two reasons to it. Uh, some use it uh, to intentionally co change their skin color, but there are some that have skin conditions that have uh, dark spots that want to use it for skin conditions. However, um, the ones that uh, use uh, to lighten their skin is higher uh, prevalent than the other ones. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, as you study, you stated that this is not a Somali issue, an African American, Latino American. Can we extend that also to white Caucasian women when they do tanning and there's been millions of dollars to have a darker skin? It's so the opposite. In our study, it didn't focus on the white community yeah. or tanning. We only focused on skin lighting and skin lighting practices. 
So initially we focused on the Somali community, but later on we found out that one community and the Karen and the Latino are having the same issue. So that's why we're extending our campaign to educate these communities <laughs> as well. You know, I, back home in Egypt, uh, you know, we have the southern part of Egypt who is closer to Africa and Sudan, and they have darker skin. Mm -hmm. And they have the northern and uh, the city in the middle, you know, Cairo. Uh, but I, I think I grew up with being uh, darker is a sign of beauty. And we have song and literature about Asmari, Asmarani, smile, and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'll th I think it is an issue there too. You know, people been rejected, uh, men been rejected because they are darker skin, women been rejected by our darker skin. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm getting, is this kind of has something to do with the history, with coloni uh, colonization and white, uh, you know, supremacy and all that, that, that our part of the world suffers from it. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't your part of the study. Yeah, my study uh, didn't focus on a sociological aspect. We only focused on the health aspect. However, it's highly prevalent uh, practice around the world, mainly Asia and Africa, especially Africa, Nigeria, 77% of Nigerian women do practice skin lighting. Really? Yeah, that's the, the study that WHO released uh, two years ago. And so in Africa, it's highly uh, prevalent. Uh, and there's a literature that talks about... Uh, so that. what is the man's attitude about this? Because I think what's derived also, uh, the man has something to do with it, expectation. He wants, uh, you know, so uh, the woman catering to man's some kind of dom dom domination of mm -hmm. uh, woman, that's one of it. Yeah. Well, um, the women that we interviewed for the study, uh, they talked about how men want the fair skin women. And so that was one of the main influences. So I approached men. Now, uh, part of my discussion and education, I do talk to men. And they absolutely do, do admit that before, that was something that they, Ex they expect. That yeah. They prefer. But, but it's not anymore. I see. Yeah. Do, do men use? Uh, those kind of products? Some, some men use, but our study didn't focus on men. Uh -huh. yeah. But, inter you know, that would be interesting to see if this is a woman issue or is this a man issue? Can I, you know, uh, so if it's a man issue, then men talking about race or dark, you know, in general. But mm -hmm. if it is just women doing it, that's a different... Um, based on the literature review that I did, uh, Countries in Africa, uh, especially Ghana and Nigeria, men practice, Jamaica, men practices. So it's not as prevalent as women practicing, like we but have it here. does exist. Yeah. Okay. So what do they use? You, 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 as a health mm -hmm. educator, what's your biggest, why, why can't uh, white, I mean, why can't Somali women have a light skin? I mean, she has the right to whatever. So uh, as a health uh, educator, or researcher, what's your concern? My uh, concern is because of the products that we tested. We tested 27 products, and 11 of them showed high levels of mercury, of them, huh? which uh, ranged from 4.8 to 33,000 parts per million. It's extremely toxic. And we worry about uh, women using during childbearing age, during pregnancy, and breastfeeding. And so that exposure, it's not good for the child, it's not good for the women. You talk about birth defects, you talk about... Uh, Neurological some... effects and kidney effects, especially mm -hmm. um, some of the women we had in the, in the interview said that they used during breastfeeding and, and pregnancy. And through breast milk, uh, it can easily pass through to the child and we don't want uh, that to happen. So when those, how did they get this product anyway? I, I'm, I can't believe, I can't, I can't imagine it's made here. It's not made here, actually. It's imported from Middle Eastern countries or Asian uh, countries. This part of the world is full of trouble. <laughs> they don't produce anything. But. So uh, how did they get it here? So uh, they even let they don't let us get some lab from Egypt or yeah. some. So the. When we did this study, the FDA uh, got involved in the case and they did their own investigation and they found out that people were bringing through personal luggages. So people, uh, these business owners uh, get it through personal luggages and there's no way to trace that. Mm -hmm. It will look like 
anything. Yeah, you know. their personal luggage. So. Um, and then where does it end up? So then it ends up. Uh, so we bought the products from the Hmong market and the Somali market. Uh, so uh, and these markets, nobody used to regulate them before, but now there's a real regulation. It's that it's You talked in about place. Uh, the FBI was raiding uh, some of this. Uh, Shops or stores? No, uh, Minnesota Pollution Control. Okay. Yeah, went to the stores, took the products off of the shelves. And uh, w w and this uh, this is a violation of some sort. There is a violation. Uh, nobody uh, can sell uh, skin light uh, products, cosmetic products that contain mercury in the state of Minnesota. And as a result of this study and um, other studies that happened in New York and California. FDA issued a uh, policy change in 2000 to allow that state uh, nationwide. There's a lot of products that don't have to go through the FDA. I mean, uh, off-shelf products. Yeah, but but the states can regulate I when because mercury is already banned yeah. in the state of Minnesota. But most and of other the products states. have chemicals now, so there is a like a, a level of it. Maybe certain level. Certain level with with uh, mercury in cosmetics, it has to be less than the threshold. FDA threshold is less than one parts per million. And uh, is this an awareness issue? Do, do, do are the Somali women aware of uh, ramification and the health issue? Or? So for the last three years, we have been doing education, uh, uh -huh. going into the community, educating, meeting with providers, healthcare providers, and uh, making sure that. Uh, System change and policy change happen. So, what's the reaction? Do they trust your? Uh, I mean, we, we we came from a culture we don't really trust institutions, mm -hmm. you know, especially you know, white institutions or other institutions. But uh, but it all it all depends on building relationship I with see. communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so b we build relationship with them, and so through that way, we were able to educate them. Uh, and it really, uh, a lot of women stopped because this has association with their children's health. Mm -hmm. And so that was a trigger for them to stop. Well, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm not also stereotyping or anything, but most of the Somali women are covered. Mm -hmm. So what's the skin? I mean, you don't show it anyway. Uh, well, well, people still want to uh, feel look. among themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's very much for themselves. And our study didn't focus that, so I don't know. That's the sociological part that we <laughs> yeah, need but to what I'm study. Is, <laughs> you, in a study, so the, some women say, I want to attract men so mm -hmm. I can get married. Yep. But you are covered. So there's something going on here. <laughs> but, but, but still, uh, whether they cover or not, um, it has something yeah, to yeah. do with the self-esteem and, and what's norm in the culture. If, if, if fair-skinned women is norm in the culture and men want that, then that's what they uh, and want uh, to you know, have. You can show your face, too. I mean, you're not covered. I'm not saying the mm -hmm. body's wearing a burk. But it is, it is really about beauty and about the uh, relation between men and women, which is uh, really, uh, it's a woman issue, it's not a Somali issue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a worldwide issue, yeah. actually. It's not only a Somali issue, and, and we didn't do the study that it's just a Somali yeah. issue. That's how about the, mm -hmm. You know, uh, how men control women one way or another. You should look a certain way, your skin should look this way, or your weight, your size, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's part of that, but so what I'm saying is, dealing with this, you have to deal with men too, Absolutely. not just women. Yeah. So our uh, health education through the skin lighting uh, process, we also engage men. Mm -hmm. uh, if women is putting on these uh, products that contain mercury, it does not only affect her, but anybody that leaves the house uh, with her, it. It's affecting them too. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's it's it, it's an issue that men has that has to uh, get involved. Amira, well, thank you so much for coming us and educating us. This is a fascinating story. I'm sure we'll.